have sinned, all right, uh, besides confessing to God, it's not enough. You must go and buy a bird. You go, must go and buy an animal, a blemish, an uh, animal without blemish, and, and to go and see the priest, and then, and, and then he will do some cleansing on you. These are ceremonial laws. We don't do that. Because why? There are 600 world all these ceremonial law. Ceremonial buy up a person. You know, that come under, that is not God's way of law. Those are ceremonial law in the Old Testament. Because those days, they are quite loose. You know, those days, that country have not been properly formed all over the world. So God wants to consecrate them as one nation. And by that, God gave them, you know, gave them some law, what to, what to follow. But the Pharisee added many things in order to have a control over the people. So we don't do that. Whenever I mention law or commandment, we are talking about your sanctity, the sanctity of your life. The sanctity of your life means the conduct of your life. But because of why? The love of God. Tell me, all of you who are parents, sometimes you need to be a bit strict on your children, right? This is not to burden them. This is to keep them on track, isn't it? To a life that is pleasing to God. We don't give, we don't issue, you know, uh, we, we don't tell people what to do just to make them feel difficult. The church does not do that. I know. Dr. Listed many programs. Almost the whole week has got some programs, isn't it? All these programs and activities it is an exhortation of God for your good. Of course, I understand you may not be able to show up everyone now. You know, but being the shepherd of the house, we all long to see you grow alongside one another. Not because of we get anything out of it, isn't it, Dr. Kwan? No, we don't get anything out of it. You want to say, you know, you, you, to put it bluntly, sometimes we look at also. <laughs> we look at our sleep, we look at our money, we look at, oh. Those days when I was pastoring very intensively, hey, really, <laughs> hey, oh, you don't know, I, I, I want to spare you from that. But never tell us, the good point is what, doctor, God keeps you in that way. Mm. You know, I call it a privilege, though sometimes I also don't like it, but I call it privilege, because why? It keeps me on track. Uh, just like when... Every Thursday, I spend a lot of time, sometimes even two days to prepare some teaching material because I don't want to take it for granted. Anything that I teach not right, Tony will know one. Huh? Uh, hey, hey, it's not <laughs> uh, joking. Huh? Doctor is there. Deborah is there. And, and, and that's why I, if I say anything uh, uh, wrongly, I know people are there to check. Isn't it? That is what experience in Thessalonians too. You teach, we check. Now, this is not about checking everything I say, lah, you know, huh? but we are talking about the essence of the teaching, the doctrine. Uh, like Dr. Diru said, come. Coming to Sunday, coming here Sunday, by hearing a message, right, your heart pounded and the worship leads you into a sense of level of spirituality, but that is not good because when you go out, right, the world it is very, very cruel. When you go out, you, are, you, are, you smell the air, the forces, the, the devil, the Satan is in the air. I'm talking about in a spiritual sense, all right? He is controlling everyone. Then you go home and then you have some issue in your family and then this and that, and then your spirit goes down. That is why. It's necessary to keep yourself charged. Spiritually charged. Get involved in the activities and program of the church, right? As much as you can. This is not playing yes, one or not, don't want. It is for your own life. Okay? Now, it is the love of God. It is the love of God that we are called. 
called to keep his commandment. And the funny thing is, John said, his commandment are not burdensome. Why? Why do we find God's command so burdensome, so difficult? You know why? It's, it's very simple. Because God's standard is perfect. You and me, definitely not. That is why we feel very burdensome. But Jesus said, come to me. My yoke is light and easy, isn't it? Don't tell me Jesus was lying. He said, come to me. This is where grace plays a part. This is where grace of God or grace of the Lord plays the most essential part in your life. I will share with you what does grace do actually. Having been saved without, you know, without anything on our part, and Jesus has done it all, but what does that mean, that grace? Okay, now, next, you see here. Uh, for the law, now you are reading the word, right? You are reading the same Bible as I'm reading, isn't it? Tell me, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Moses told the people the law of God, the commandment. All right, please, please, uh, putting aside. The ceremonial law. I'm talking about the moral, moral law, right? How our conduct, our own conduct after having come to Christ, right? You see? But grace and truth came to Jesus Christ. Moses is not God. He was once a spokesman for God. During a time, Christ has not shown up yet. But Moses being the one chosen, chosen, really chosen, suffered a lot. But he was the one chosen to speak out the Ten Commandments, the law of God. It is only later those who want to turn it into a religion added 600 over ceremonial law, you know. You must do this, you must do this. Listen, truth, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the personification of grace, which means Jesus embodied grace. All right? But that is not all. Jesus also the personification, I mean, he embodied truth. Whenever you read what Jesus, his life and his teaching, his warning, you are embodying truth. Kepeturan, huh? Well, all of a sudden I come out with Malay, oh, terrible. And uh, I was very bad in Basel, huh? Do you say that? Kepeturan. Listen. The law given. Talking about mostly moral law, okay? It is not to burden you, but to keep you on track. But God knows you cannot meet. You cannot perfectly fulfill all the law and command commandments of God. That's why Jesus, the only person, because by essence, he is God co-equal. He is the Son of God. But he's co-equal with God. He died on the cross. And it was predestinated. The way he, he was killed on the cross was the most brutal way of dying. Imagine uh, you are nailed on the cross for hours and you won't die yet. And you will experience all your heart pumping, trying to push out, push in and push out oxygen. And then he was nailed on the cross. Both here, 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 here. And then, of course, he, due to pain, he was dropping down. Isn't that right? 
when you drop down, you cannot breathe. So Jesus had to push himself up to take a breather and then go down again. Just imagine. Just imagine. Uh, you know, sometimes we just, uh, you know, we just, uh, you know, accidentally bang our hand, our leg. Oh, you're so, so painful. Oh, you're so painful, so painful. Oh, as though we will die like that. All oh, right, okay. And then just imagine Jesus was six hours uh, on the cross, pulling down. The gravity of the earth pulled him down. Cannot breathe. Tapole na fast. Um, passer again, no? very good. No? Not bad, huh? <laughs> then he has to pull himself. No, no, no. You know what? The Lord, a God, predestinated the way Jesus must die to show the full picture of the ugliness, the sinful ugliness, and the extent of weakness of human beings. Oh, now those of you who feel certain sense of pride in you would think, oh, Pastor, I, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I told you, you may be better than the person. Oh, I don't deny that. You know, some of us live very disciplined life. I, I don't deny that. But we are not talking about measuring against one another. We are talking about measuring against the perfection of God. The law demands that. And you can never meet that requirement. That's why Jesus died on the cross. For you and for me. That is grace and truth. But day after what then? Okay. Romans. I, I sometimes... Tell some unbelievers, uh, you know, who go about life just swinging along and all that. We know eternal perspective. We know eternal value. They are just a happy-go-lucky guy and all that. So whenever I touch on, <clears throat> all men have sinned. You can see sometimes their eyes popping out with some wonders. What do you mean? Right? I feed my family, I don't steal, I don't rob, I've never been to prison, I've never raped any, any woman. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Don't deny that fact. But above all our spirit, all, all our moral sins or moral trespasses, the most rebellious Sin of all it is we reject God reveal in the scripture. Pastor, what about other religions? They are religion. They are man-made religion. None of the religions speak of God Himself came in the person of His Son, took on the image, took on the body of a man living among us and then serving God from the very beginning to the very end and he died and he grandly said it is done and not all you know, the beauty of the whole process of gospel not just about self, safe in this life I'm looking forward to be saved in, into eternity I, I would think this now this is my theology which is Execute, you know, exegeted from the scripture. I, I, I term the complete, completeness of salvation is this. We come to the Lord and we live, yeah? And then we do our best, you know, to live by uh, 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 Christ's grace and, and to be fulfilled, at least to be pleasing, all right? And, and renewal of my mind. And then later when I die, if Christ has not returned yet, all right, I, I will, my body will be sleeping. My, my spirit will be with, with God, but without a body yet. That is why I zoom into 1 Corinthians 15 and also another chapter in the old New Testament. He said one day in Thessalonians, you'll be given a new glorified body. Then only I will say that is complete salvation or redemption, put it that way. You are safe. 
but you will be fully redeemed. Pastor, are you, are you talking about some fantasy story? Well, you may think so. But I don't think so. But I think most of you don't think so. Because why? You have been called to faith in Christ in a supernatural way. Me, being a very stubborn guy, all my, you know, growing up, coming to the Lord is unthinkable. That's why my older sister said, same. Yeah, then I remember, my poor teacher, God uses the unworthy, isn't it? Right? You, you can be a very good moral person and all these things, but then you have a pride. You cannot accept that Bible, Bible announces that you are a sinner, fall short of God's glory. Oh, you cannot stand. That makes me very angry because you make me feel very lowly. It's exactly God and Jesus come for the lowly. Lowly in heart. People who humble themselves before God. Okay, now, the law, uh, okay. Romans 6, 14. For sins, for sin will have no dominion over you. Since you are not under the law, but under grace. This is, which often been misused. For sin, we will have no dominion. Yeah? True? Sin should have no dominion. That means sin should have no control over me. True, true. Since I'm not under law now, okay, I'm not under the order or the commandment of God, but I'm under grace. What you see next one? What Jesus said in Matthew? the prophets, what the prophets teach, alright, I have not come to abolish them, but do what? Do what? Say, come on. Fulfill them. I have not come to abolish, but I have come to fulfill them. I'm the only one who can fulfill them. By that, some preacher take it to an extra land and say, well, that is why Jesus has fulfilled it. You don't have to do anything now. It's not true. After being justified, you still need to be sanctified. You still need to grow. Let me give you a very contemporary example, all right? Um, let's say one of you young lady get to know a very handsome man, very caring man, all right? You fall in love, head over heels. Anything also can, true enough. Then later on, you get married. You know, at that point of time, you meant it. You love the man and the man loves you, okay? So you, you, you plan to spend your time, all right, uh, 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 you know, on earth throughout the very end. And then you make pledges uh, uh, till death to part and all that, uh, okay? But once you get into the marriage structure, do you have to obey something? Of course, isn't it? Once you get into the marriage structure, I love you, I love you. Is that enough? Try not to go out and work and see. Try if your husband go out and stay all night and then spending time all foolishly. We all, try and see. There are some laws, isn't it? There are some laws, isn't it? Certain law must be established in the home, isn't it? You cannot do this, cannot do that. Oh, very burdensome. Of course, it's burdensome because you don't like it. Because your rebellious nature never like it. Then you have to submit to certain structural law. If this is true, how more true is God's law played out in our life? Okay? Now, Romans 5, 20 to 21. Now, you see now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Now let me explain what does this mean in simple English, understandable language. Now the law came in to increase, 
the trespass. Trespass means sin. All right, that means something that you do wrongly. Now, what does that mean? The law came in to increase it. Listen, uh, yeah. Let's say you are husband and wife. All right, and then you have some kind of a structural law. Say, don't come back. Uh, you know, every night, more than twelve. All right, later than twelve. 12 p.m. Is that right? 12 a.m. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, you you may have you may, you, you are you can go for some some exercise and this and that's spend time with your family. But uh, some friends, but do not go later than that. Okay, that's law. That's law. That's law. So one you stated 12 a.m. Uh, right? Yeah. Your husband come back or your wife come back later than that. It exposes the trespass. It exposes. The wrong thing he does. Is that right or not? That is why whenever you tell people, well, don't come back so late, ah, ah that person who listens say, you didn't say what time, ah? You didn't say what time, ah? All right, I come back two o'clock. I mean, some to some people, two o'clock in the morning is still early. Am I right or not? That is why sometimes law has to be stated loud and clear. That is why the government sometimes have to law, isn't it? What you can do and what you cannot do. That is why it says here, the law came in to increase the trespass. That exposes you. How much transgression, how, how much trespasses you have committed. We need law to guard our life. Okay? Now, but then at the same time, grace abounded all the more. But because you have been exposed that you have trespassed, but God's grace through Christ increases to meet up, to assure that eventually you and me, huh, those who have genuine faith in the Lord, are still saved. That's what it means. Understand? Not your head and see. <laughs> the law exposes. Your transgression level, okay? But as it increases, exposes more, the grace abounded more. Which mean, which mean in simple English, Christ's death on the cross and ascension back to God is more than enough to meet up all your sin. It's enough and powerful enough to meet up all to satisfy God's anger on all the sins you and me have committed. Understand? Okay? But now this is on the law's part only, huh? not the... <laughs> okay. Now, so that as sin reigns in death, grace must might reign through righteousness. Who is that righteousness? We are talking about Christ is the righteousness. Christ is the embodiment of truth, or grace, and also righteousness. Which means right with God all the way. So Jesus is the embodiment of righteousness. Now, so as sin reigns in death, grace might reign to righteousness, leading to eternal life to Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm grateful, really grateful. Without law, I don't know I need God or not. True enough. If there's no law, uh, I'm coming back to the story, all right? If a husband and uh, or the wife always come back very late, flirting around and all that. If there's no standard of law to expose that, huh, he wouldn't need forgiveness from you, isn't it? You say, I didn't do anything wrong, right? But you said, I I'm just giving you a small little example here. You should, not, you, you should not do this, you should not do that. But once you, you, you violated that, that, that boundary of law, you're guilty, isn't it? If the person really realizes he's guilty, he will ask for forgiveness, isn't it? Am I right or not? You see, sinners leaving them on their own, they won't ask for forgiveness because they don't know. I've tried spoken to a lot of people who have not been quickened by God's spirit. That means they have no sense of, of guilt and sin and faith in the Lord. They don't know. They don't even know. And they always think that they are good men and good women. 
So when you tell them you need forgiveness from God, they will think, why? I have not done anything wrong, so why do I need forgiveness from God, so-called from God? Who ended up, Jesus died on the cross. Mm. That's why the law exposes you. You understand? Uh? The standard review in the scripture exposes you. Expose that you need God for your trespasses. Well, by the law, now, see, by the law, the knowledge of sin. By law, we acknowledge sin. That means we come to senses about what sins are. I told you already. You cannot do that. You cannot, you cannot do that. Yeah. But once you do above that, then you, you're right. You have, you have crossed the boundary, which means you have violated the law. So the law exposure is necessary. If there is no law reviewing scripture, we do not know how to live our life. Am I right or not? If we do not live, know how to live our life, there's no issue then of needing God's grace, needing God's uh, uh, forgiveness. That is why the teaching of the word is so important. Wonderful worship this morning. But the teaching of the word make your worship meaningful. You understand now, without studying, one day I hope I can share a message on worship. Without learning from the word of God, your all other ministry have no meaning, right? It's only skin depth, you know, only skin level. Am I? That's why the teaching of the word Tuesday and Dr. Kwan, you know, we are here to, to, to bring you into the deeper uh, realization of God's word. And that will make your life meaningful that will make your life essentially and meaningful you, that include your struggle not just your happiness also your struggle all right by the law sin is the knowledge of sin by grace is redemption from him right by the law is the law without law we don't know how bad we are how sinful we are by grace, redemption from sin. Now here, the law demands full obedience, which you and me cannot meet. But Jesus has done it. That's why he is our grace from God. Jesus is the grace from God. Yeah. Grace, what else grace do? Well, Pastor, I, 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 I'm saved now. Oh no, Jesus is my grace. It's the grace from God, so I'm saved now. Then you walk away. The grace is dead. The grace has got no meaning. Because grace, it is not a temporary matter. It's not when you come for altar call, I pray for you, you accept Jesus. Uh, grace, you're saved. Now, from now on, how you live your life, how you sin today, tomorrow, don't, doesn't matter. That's what hyper grace teacher teach. It cannot be. Which means grace has died, isn't it? That means grace has, has, has fulfilled its function and limit. And then no more already. Even though you keep uttering the word grace, but it serves no purpose. It's not true. Grace, listen, uh, grace bestow. Grace, that means grace anoint and putting it on you and give power to obey. The law exposes, but grace forgiven again and again. All right? Then it gives you power to obey. Okay, now the second part quickly. Yeah. The danger of pushing legalistic faith and the teaching of hyper grace. Legalistic faith render believers helpless and hopeless. If you tell people, and, and you must do this in order to be safe. You must do that in order to be pleasing to God. You must do this, you must do that. Must do that. It, it legalizes everything. Once everything is legalized, it makes us, it renders, it makes us hopeless and helpless because we simply can't do it all. But that doesn't mean we, you don't try. 
even with much of your effort, right, you are not able to meet God's standard. Please, I remember, I don't mean you take it loose, eh? or oh, you mean I, I don't want to go into lying, cannot man? I, I can, so actually you can. Actually you can, right? You don't lie. But sometimes do you exaggerate? Come on, come on, come on. We exaggerate all the time, don't we? True or not? Sometimes people ask me, hey, Pastor, how, how much time do you need to travel down to Shambhan? Well, hmm, if I feel good, huh, I say, hmm, 30 minutes. Huh? Uh, sometimes you want to exaggerate more. 15 minutes also can. Huh? Have you heard people say 15 minutes okay? No, serious, I'm not joking. I have, uh, maybe Michael can do it. Uh, Michael, huh? You see, uh, lying is you telling something which is not there, all right, all right? But manipulating, exaggerating is twisting, all right, truth. In God's standard, it is both sin at the same level. Am I right? Oh, Pastor, I, I do care for one another. I do care for people. Okay, very, very good. All right, okay, you do care. But sometimes, do you care less? Oh, God, what do you mean you say like that? Die la. Die la. That's why you die la. You know, our dear you know, sister, you know, care for the mother. Even you care for the mother. Sometimes, also, sometimes, uh, sometimes you got a little bit of angry. You know, right, right, right? Am I right? Right, right? You know, old lady la. Oh, you know, you say, mother, come on, walk a bit, walk a bit. Don't want to. Don't want to. Don't want I mean, it's true, you get really mang zhang one sometimes, isn't it? Right? You see? Right? If the mang zhang uh, is not sin, uh, right? That's the natural part. Uh. If God ever mang zhang, uh, eh, sorry, uh, mang zhang means agitated. Remember what it says? You don't know so, right? Listen, uh, if you think that human mang zhang, uh, human get angry and agitated, nothing. Uh. Just think, uh, we are made in the image of God. If God ever get mang zhang, uh, <laughs> if God say, I'm really mang zhang, uh, oh, I'm, I'm. You see, uh, that is sin. God does not do that. He is calm in his personhood. You understand? All that you are angering him, he already knows. That is why he put Jesus on the cross. Once and for all, acknowledge that the brutal way Jesus died show all your extreme, furthest and biggest and worst attitude in life. Come on. That's why our dear Jesus, do you, I mean, I, I, I know you care for your mother, which I always very moved by daughters like that, to be very honest, okay? But then you say, I'm perfect now? Definitely not. You still need God's grace. Is it? Because God's grace do more than just save you. Later on, the latest part, you will learn grace do more than just save you. you know why? It actually work with glory to make you grow. Okay, now, hyper grace. Hyper grace means it's not, not the kind of biblical grace. We are talking about you know, after you've been saved, you can do anything you want. You don't need to change anything, you know. You don't make an effort to change anything because God accepts who I am. Okay? So this is a negative one. Huh? Hyper grace makes, no, makes one no power. You have no power over the dominion of sin. You have no power. You're powerless and you're faithless. Then why are you quoting, by God it is possible? By man, it is not possible, isn't it? You have heard all this teaching, isn't it? With God, everything is possible. Am I right now, Christine? So, where does it come from? With God, everything is possible. Come on. You see, uh, the teacher of those, the, the kind of doctrine, make life uh, very confusing. Make life, it, it takes, it ceases opportunity especially those who are not long in the faith, especially those who have no depth in God's word. It 
play your heart out. You come to God, you come to Christ, you are saved, and then never mind, you are not responsible for anything. That is not true. Grace and law work together. But Jesus said, huh? you see, Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Jesus, by this, he says, I know you struggle with many things. Life encompasses a lot of struggle. Am I right? We get old, we fall sick, we have conflict with family, we have conflict with people, we have work problem, isn't it? Right? The government doesn't seem, doesn't seem to be the, uh, or any government doesn't seem to be good enough, isn't it? And then accident happen, incident, you know, happen not the way you want it. That is why Jesus said, come, come. Who, who come? Who, who, who come? Those who labor. That means you go about life toiling around. That means you go in and out of your life every day and then you know heavy laden, isn't it? Come on. We are all heavy laden. That means we struggle with a lot of things in life. That's why Jesus said, come. You work hard and then yet you are heavy, heavy, heavily laden. Come. Come to me. You know why? You need rest. Then he goes on to say, Take my yoke. You know yoke? You know, sometimes you see two uh, b- b- uh, cow or two bull, buffalo, you know. You have a stick. Huh? You have something on their back just to make sure they walk together. That is called yoke. Huh? That is called yoke. Understand? All right? Nowadays, we don't see much of this, but then uh, uh, two cow walk together. You, you want to walk. You want to put two animals walk together, huh? right? Not walk one after another. You have to put something on their back, isn't it? To control. This is called yoke. So, take my yoke, take my yoke upon you, and you learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, I mean humble, and you will find rest for your souls. For my soul is easy, my burden is light. Jesus promises, come to him. The yoke shall be on you and on Christ himself. Which means he's going to walk alongside you. Understand? This is called exodus. Now, the yoke, you see, I mean, when you come to use the word yoke, which means have to be two animals, at least. You know, putting on their back, saying, you see, one will lead another one. The weaker one will be helped by the stronger one. And he will guide the way. Which means... Spiritually understanding, when you come to faith in the Lord, those who humble and now and honest and now and say life is not easy. All right, I'm still dealing with life issue, but all the worst, which make it worse, is because I still have a lot of natural man in me. I still have a lot of negative natural tendency. Like I get angry easily, la. You know, I still lust for this, la. Lust for that, la. L U S T, lust. And I, I still don't hate to be to hate to be told what to do, la. And I, I don't like church telling me what to do, la. And all that. So Jesus knows you struggle. He said, come, 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 come. I know you try. You perhaps, perhaps you have tried your very best, and yet you still heavily laden. Come, put my yoke on your back. I'm going to walk with you. Quickly, uh, Romans 6, 1, 2. Now, those who, 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 who champion the teaching of hyper grace, come on, explain this to me. Right? What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? Do we, do we test God how much grace He has got for us by purposely going sin? Right? Do we do that? We don't do that, isn't it? Right? We, we, don't, we don't come to a, a, a traffic light and say, Oh, I purposely go and skin red light. See, the, there's a policeman. See whether he will catch me or not. Do we do that? 
You don't do that. Jesus has paid all, and you don't test God. That's why Jesus said, told the Satan, told Satan in, in Matthew chapter 4, you don't test God. Don't ever test God. Because God is debtor of no man. God does not owe you anything. What he gave to us are all by grace. So don't test him. So, by no means, see, that's an exclamation mark, isn't it? By no means. By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? We may not be able to meet God's holy standard every day of our life, every minute, every second. That's why grace comes in. Right? To meet up the gap. You know what I'm saying? But then grace does not stop there. So we are, the grace is not a license to continue sinning. Living a life that is not pleasing to God. Okay? I, I want to put it in three short, uh, simple sentences so that you know. We have been saved. By justification, we have been saved. Okay? By sanctification, which means cleansing, huh? slowly cleansing, we are being what? Come on. Being saved. And one day, one day, uh, as Christ returns and make new of everything, your dead body will be made new. We will be saved. Come on, give God a big hand. Not for more, I tell you. Quickly, quickly. The doctrine of justification. Ephesians chapter 2. Now it's all scriptural. For by grace you have been saved through faith, right? And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God and not a result of work. So that no one can boast. True, true, true. Your salvation is by grace. It's by grace. So that no one can boast, oh, I do this, I do that. But never tell us grace is not excuse away, right? I'm okay. sorry, law is not put aside. Romans 5, 1, 2. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is justification. Like I said, you have been presented in court and you're found guilty with all the evidence and someone come out and say, then the, 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 the judge say, you are sentenced to prison or you are sent, you, you'll be sent to gallow and someone comes and say, I have paid it. I have paid for everything, all right? That is justification. That is good news, isn't it, right? Then, in sanctification, being cleansed, all right, daily. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, 23. Now may the God of peace, listen, uh, God of peace sanctify you. The peace of God doesn't mean just feeling good, feeling happy. No, which means Jesus for the honor of God has met up. That is why you are you and God through Christ are in peace relationship now. So may God of peace sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit listen, huh? You see? You see for yourself? We are reading a same scripture. May your whole spirit, your soul, and your body. Your whole spirit. Your soul and your body, that is everything about you, be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of you, all of ourselves. One, two, Thessalonians. But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruit to be saved through sanctification sanctification by the Spirit and your belief and power by God all right, in the truth. Right? It's all before your very eyes. All right? That is justification. Now come to sanctification. Sanctification, we need law to be in place. Okay? I'm not talking about law, or, you know, or, or ceremonial law or what law. I'm talking about the standard of God, the law of God, all right, how we should live our life as Christians. 
Romans 8, 13. And those whom he testing, he also... Okay, why so fast are you? Okay, I'm, talk, I'm still in... Okay, sanctified. All right? So you need to be sanctified. Right? As you go on with your Christian life, you need to be sanctified by the peace of God, uh, by all that has been revealed in Scripture, helped by the church, helped by one another. Okay? So you have been justified. All right? your, the, the, your penalty has been paid in full. But now you have to grow. Now you have to grow. And the last one is glorification. And those whom he destined, predestinated, predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those who, those he justified, he also glorified. Right? We are not at the stage of glorification yet. Uh, glorification basically means you're glorified. You are a glorified person. That means by God's grace, you have been given a new body, a new mind, and a new soul. Sin. Okay, now second. Philippians chapter 3, 20 and 21. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body. You see? By the power that enables him to subject all things. By what power? Because he has got all the power in the world. He has been given by God all things subject to him. That even includes nature. So you will be given a new body. Lagi chanted. Lagi perfect. That jadi tua won't get old, won't get sick. And sin is not there anymore. Sin is in absence. So we will not have brokenness, you know, guilt. But that is life to come later. Okay, now, quickly, uh, I'm going to end here. Just five purposes and follow up. Purposes and power of God's grace. Now, now today the message is more about we need, the law is there. Whether you need or not, the law is there, okay? But then God's grace is also there. We are saved by grace, but we need to be sanctified, all right? We need to grow in our, in our stature, in our, in our Christian faith. And there is where, you know, the, the Bible has given us some law, how to lead our life. Uh, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, uh, okay? No. But then, in order to make it um, easier to remember, I put it in five, five uh, points about grace. After you have been saved, you have converted into a, a Christian, come to faith in Christ. Grace does not stop doing. It's grand, changing work. First of all, redemptive. God saved his people unconditionally by his grace on his part, but it's conditionally on their part. Okay, now please, 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 I'm not here promoting legalistic. I'm just saying, if you are genuinely have come to faith in Jesus, you will change. Definitely, you will change. Yeah, definitely, over time, you will change. If you keep, if you have come genuinely to the faith in Christ, you will, you will you'll be enlightened by all the teaching from God. And the Holy Spirit will, will enhance on that. You will, you'll be part of the church. You'll be part of the Christian term. But never tell us, never tell us, you have to grow your faith by living the way the Lord commands. May not be perfect, but surely you begin to hate sin. Anything that, anything that is not pleasing to God, you don't like it. Those of you who do not smoke cigarette, Christina, huh? if you walk into a place where a lot of people smoke cigarette, do you like it? I mean, I mean do you like it? You know, some Indonesians smoke those cigarettes. Huh? You know, you know. I mean, no, 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 I'm not judging people who smoke, okay? I'm just saying, all right? If you are a person who, are, who is a non-smoker, and then you walk into a room full of smoke, people smoking and you know, all that, 
you find it disdain, isn't it? You find it... Uh, it it's not because of you looking down upon the people, it's just that that place is annoying, you know? It is something that your non-smoking background don't like, isn't it? Isn't it? But if you are a smoker, you walk into a room, a uh, karaoke room, everybody smoking. Oh, nice, man. Ooh, come on, give me one. Uh, definitely, because why? You, are, you have blended in. Your, your smoking background makes you acceptable, isn't it? Your, 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 all this smoke is acceptable to you. No, no, don't get me wrong. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not judging anyone who smoke, uh, okay? I'm not judging anyone to smoke. But of course, you know, uh, smoking can't be a lot of hexaders, isn't it? So come to the Lord slowly, work on it, uh, okay? Send. No, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying anyone you smoke. Tony, uh, okay? I'm just giving you an example that you can understand. But if you are a joint smoker, who oh, you nice man? <laughs> wow, who smoke what? Huh? Can I have something? Uh? Can I have a little bit? Uh? You know, those, uh, okay? Now, so that is your part, okay? But don't let this part of work uh, 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 tie you down. Grow in stature, grow in your understanding of the word of God because the law is given to safeguard you, okay? Second, Instructive grace is also instructive, right? God reveals how grace perfectly works to His will and love. Grace is not a thing that is over after your, your conversion. Grace it is instructive, they are You know what I'm saying? I want to speak more of, of, of a pastor, but no more. Do <laughs> sorry, I'm a plaja. Slow email, uh, okay. First of all, it's redemptive. That means God's grace is to is to save you, okay. But it's also after that, it's instructive. It tell you how to live your life. Understand? Grace aja you machamana tinga, tinga is it? Live your life is tinga is it? Okay. Okay. Now. Commemorative now, you see, uh, God reminds people what happened in the past and how He extends and grants unmerited grace. Commemorative. That's why we have worship. Right? The worship reminds how great God is. The days of Elijah, isn't that right? right? God is no one like Him, isn't it? So it's commemorative. It reminds us who God is and who we are and what happened to our relationship. So God reminds people what happened in the past and how he, how he extends and grants unmerited grace. Two more, two more. Grace is effective in preventive. Grace prevents you like the traffic light. The traffic light. Right? It is so nobody likes traffic light. Like, come on. You like traffic light? Uh? You like traffic light or not, Tony? I don't like traffic light one. But do you need traffic light? You need this, isn't it? Because when come to a junction, you know, Dr. Kwan may come out here and then our brother may come out here. And you say, I don't need traffic light. I just go. Come on. You need traffic light. But you don't like traffic light. We all hate traffic light because traffic light symbolizes law. That means there are danger ahead. You need to be cautious. But the thing is, hey, usually when yellow, uh, eh, you call that one, I don't know. When it comes to yellow, we're supposed to slow down, isn't it? Right, Tony? But the day I saw you all, uh, the traffic light was yellow, and then you, you, you accelerate, you come, boom, boom. No, 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 no. Joking only. No, I, I, I didn't see, I didn't see. I did it. Uh. Sometimes we come to traffic light, uh, true or not, huh? You know, uh, green, already long time already, uh, so you should slow down, isn't it? Then all of a sudden, yellow, uh, don't know where to go. No! Then after you have driven past the traffic light, all of a sudden, a car at the back. Oh, ayo, ayo. oh, thank you, God. What, thank you, God, for driving through? Don't bluff. Uh, 
God said, you will die the next time you do that. I reckon. Uh, but we all hate to break the law. I also have that struggle, Anthony. I see yellow, I say, one, two, three, get, 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 boom! Go already. Did this also do that? <laughs> okay, now, grace is also preventive in his power. God's grace explained in scripture served to help his people on guard against what? Temptation. Making you wise, some. Okay, last one. Huh? It's preventive, but it's also preemptive. God's grace has begun working in the life of his people long before it's realized and understood. Tell you, my dear friend here, Suma, Suma Rong Sini, if you have, you're in the church and have come to faith in Jesus Christ, you don't know how he has worked in your life. You don't know what upper jadi. You know why? Because God, before you realize, before you faham, there's Suda Kaja. You know how great God is? Long before you realize you are who you are today in Christ, God, long time ago, has started work in your life. That's why I say it is preemptive. Now, just one statement here. All right, I posted it on Facebook. Without grace, we can never be safe. Without law, we do not know how to live. Without grace, we are damned. All right, but without law, we will be confused. We will not need grace anymore. Understand that? Grace make you, fix you, that you need grace from God continuously. Let's stand up, come on. I want to say a prayer for all of you. <laughs> Father, we give you thanks from the depth of our heart. By grace, we have been saved. We are so very grateful. And Jesus, you have come to be the mediator between a holy God and sinful people. And you meet all God's requirement and command in our place. You took yourself upon the cross. But three days later, you ascended. You resurrected and ascended back to God. For this, this is not just a story to be told. But if it is, it's a moving story, a powerful story. But at the same time, it is true. So help us, Lord, that today you have made your words clear and loud. May all of us keep reminding ourselves that grace has not stopped its work after coming to faith in Christ. In fact, grace can do much more to bring us into full redemption. So do we play around with law? Do we hate law? We don't like law because it exposes us. But we need it because it helps us on track. So, help all of us not to have itching ears and listening to those who proclaim gospel of other kind. We want to know the truth strictly revealed and taught in the scripture with proper exegesis, with proper interpretation. May all those who teach and preach the truth of God be blessed. And those who listen to it and grow to it be blessed too. 
all honor belongs to you. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a big hand. Yeah, brother and sister, wonderful message. Give another big hand to God. Hallelujah. Very important, brother and sister. Salvation uh, involves three steps. Justification, sanctification, glorification. We all want shortcut from justification to glorification. I tell you, you will disqualify that. You know, because sanctification is a very important where the grace and law work together. Brother and sister, people don't, don't like sanctification because it requires sacrifice. Require a sacrifice of time, sacrifice of talents. That's why, brother and sister, you are justified, you don't do good works. You are justified to do good works so that you can be glorified because justification is done by God, glorification is done by God. Sanctification, you involve with God, you partnership with God. That is very important, brother and sister. You need to serve to grow, you need to study the Bible. You serve without studying the Bible, without knowing the word, you are serving with your own doctrine, your own ideas, brother and sister. You cannot have. All this, you're going to disqualify the whole salvation. Salvation involves three steps. That's why you emphasize everyone is serving in your here church, outside. Otherwise, you and me cannot be saved. Let's sing this song. And you have any burden, come forward. Brother and sister, our speaker, our pastor, we pray for us, church leader. Let's sing this song. Declare God is good. Declare God is good. Declare God is the truth. The glory of the risen Lord. Yes, who can compare to our God? Who, who can, can compare? Glorification is done by our Lord when He is well pleased with us. When He said, Good and faithful servant, well done. Come forward. Otherwise, may the God of grace, God of love, God of sanctification, God of glorification be with us. And may His peace be with us. And come back again next Sunday for another time with God. Thank you, Father. Bless each one of your child so that the life will never be the same as the encounter with you. Thank you, Father. Keep them safe, protect them from all harms of the evil ones. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. And may let the musician continue to sing, playing the music. Come forward and we will be blessed. Otherwise, at the back, there's a fellowship uh, uh, meal, a fellowship refreshment. God bless our us. Uh, bless us, heaven. Amen.